If you or a loved one is living with cancer, you probably have two focal points, how to rid yourself of it and how to prevent it from coming back. You'll get some terrific information today on Cancer Concepts and Compliments with Dr. James Belanger. We'll explore natural medicines which may enhance conventional therapies, share cutting-edge research, and offer insight on how diet and natural medicines can play an important role in treating and preventing cancer. The information presented herein is in no way intended as a substitute for medical counseling. Now, here is Dr. James Belanger. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cancer Concepts and Compliments. I'm your host, Dr. James Belanger. I hope you've been enjoying the show and are gaining a better understanding of the immune system. We've been talking about the immune system for the last few weeks and how it attacks cancer and how the, immune, uh, the cancer uses the immune system to help protect it as well. Um, so just in case you missed those shows, a good analogy to think about is cancer cells are like a, a group of, of kings, should we say, that are surrounded by a set of guards in a well-protected compound, like a wall around themselves and a set of guards. And the last few weeks we've been talking about natural things that can help clear those guards out of there, remove that wall around the ca- cancer and bring in those attackers, those killer cells. And now today we're going to talk about the killer cells. So we kind of cleared away the area so we can get to those kings to attack them, to get to those cancer cells. And those are the killer cells. But sometimes there's a problem with those killer cells. They don't attack very good. They're not good at destroying the cancer. Or the cancer has these mechanisms in place to delete or cause death to the killer cells. So even if they can get through the wall, get through the set of guards, then as they approach, they either are not very good at killing because the cancer has done things to uh, take away their weapons, should we say, or the cancer deletes them. Now, so there's different types of killer cells, um, four main types of killer cells. One is called the CD8 cytotoxic T cell, CD8 cytotoxic T cell, or you could call it the killer T cell. And one is called the natural killer cell. And there's different subsets of natural killer cells. And then there's what's called the, uh, like there's, then there's two killer cells that are kind of in between. There's what's called the natural killer T cell. So it's kind of like a T cell, kind of like a killer, a natural killer cell, a mix. And then there's one that's different called the gamma delta T cell. But we basically just think of them as a bunch of superheroes or something that um, like so the Avengers or something, you know, the, you got the Hulk, you got the Iron Man, you got Captain America, and they're all have their own talents and are attacking this this enemy, these killers, these cancer cells. And so the these they each have, like I said, a different talent. The CD8 killer cells can recognize proteins on the surface of cancer cells. So, you know, cancer cells are coated with these different proteins, you know, just like, you know, we have blue eyes and somebody has blue eyes, somebody has brown eyes, somebody has blonde hair, these different surface features that a um, a, a T cell will recognize and see. The T cell, the killer T cell, sees these these peptides. And if you recall from before, the inspector cells are presenting these peptides, these protein molecules, to the killer T cells and say, hey, this is what you want to look out for. This is, okay, you're looking for, you know, a, a blue-eyed, blonde-haired cancer cell type of thing. And so it, it recognizes that particular, you know, surface features and then binds to it and attacks. And it has to, um, you know, bind to something on the cancer cell called a class 1 uh, antigen. It's it's a protein that's on the surface of the cancer cell, and it has to bind to that. And then it, it just dumps all these toxic substances onto the cancer and causes cell death of the cancer. So that's what the killer T cell does. The natural killer cell does not need that class 1 antigen thing. So Because sometimes the cancer cells will do things to, dis, to disguise themselves. So you know, we use the analogy, okay, see, somebody says, okay, you're looking for somebody with blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot ten, you know, pale skin, that's, that's the features, okay, and you're looking for that, and you're the CD8 T cell, and you find that, and you bind, and, um, but 
what happens if the person changes their appearance, changes their skin color, their hair color, something like that. And um, that's where the backup system is. The killer, the natural killer cell can see things when that something has changed. So cancer cells will remove this thing called the class one antigen from their surface so that the killer T cells can't see them, but then that activates the natural killer cells. So it's a backup system. And so the natural killer cells recognize different things on the cancer cell that the killer T cell doesn't. And there's different types of natural killer cells. Um, there, there's one called the CD16 positive natural killer cell and the CD56 positive natural killer cell. And, and they're found in the blood and they're found in, in the spleen, um, in the liver and the tonsils and all the lymph nodes and stuff like that. So they're guarding all over the place. Then there is what's called the natural killer T cell. So it has features of both a natural killer cell and a killer T cell. Um, but it doesn't rep uh, recognize those proteins like the killer T cell does. It represents or, or recognizes uh, what's called glycolipids, sugar slash fat molecules on the surface of cancer. So cancer cells might not just be coated with different protein molecules. They can be coated with other things made out of fat and, and like sugar molecules, glucose. They call them glycolipids. And that's what the natural killer cells uh, can see. And um, they still, you know, present it on a protein uh, in order to become activated. But because they uh, have features of the natural killer cell and the T cell, they help bridge the gap between the two to help, um, you know, communication and stuff. Um, you can think about it that way. If you recall, though, we have these cells called inspector cells, the dendritic cells, and they're the ones that present a lot of these proteins and these uh, gly glycolipid molecules to the killer cells in the first place. And the dendritic cell looks like an octopus. So it has all these arms and it takes samples. It's the inspector. And so it's going around and taking samples of all the, of the cancer that is in its vicinity. And then it has a whole collection of these proteins, these glycolipids to present. So it's like, okay, here, here's the stuff I found on the, on the crime scene. <laughs> okay. This is what you need to be looking for. This is your, your evidence kind of thing. And then the, the natural killer T cell um, is really responsible for helping those dendritic cells mature and help activate the helper cells. Without those natural killer T cells, the dendritic cells um, are not as good at producing these things I mentioned before, interleukin-12 and gamma interferon. And so um, it's really responsible for helping the dendritic cell present its findings, its evidence to the T cells and to help it in the whole activation of the killer T cells and the natural killer cells. And then the fourth type of killer cell is called the gamma delta T cell. It is a T cell similar to the CD8 cytotoxic T cell, but it has a little bit of a different uh, receptor on it. It's called the gamma delta T cell receptor. And so that's, that's one difference between it. And it represents about 2 to 4% of all the T cells that are in the blood. And it, again, does unlike a regular CD8 T cell, does not require that uh, class 1 antigen. So it's recognizing things different than a regular CD8 cytotoxic T cell. And it, so it doesn't recognize those proteins, and it doesn't recognize the um, glycolipids. It recognizes something called phosphoantigens proteins with uh, phosphorus molecules on it. And it also recognizes some other things. So basically, we, we, they each have their own talent. They can each see things that, that others can't see. And working together, they help eliminate the cancer cells. And they do it by um, making these things called perforins and granzymes, which cause basically cell death of the cancer. And so they all work together. So all like our superheroes in there. But we need to get them there. We need to break down that barrier. We need to get those guards, those suppressor cells out of the way. And then they can work. So it's very important to have a good number of killer cells. You can measure these in the blood. If you don't have a good army, you don't have a bunch of superheroes present, then you know even if you clear out those guards and break down the wall, 
you don't have a good army to attack the cancer. So I measure all these killer cells in all the patients, and um, here's some evidence that says that that's an important thing to do. Measuring CD8 cytotoxic T cells. There's a study done in the British Journal of Cancer in 2012 in Australia. They took patients with a very type, bad type of cancer called a mesothelioma. That's the one you get from asbestos. And they also took some patients with um, some non-small cell lung cancer. So they had 40 patients, and they gave them you know, chemotherapy, platinum, uh, cisplatin, carboplatin. And they noticed there was, the patients that survived the longest had a large population of CD8-positive T cells in their blood. When they measured those and, um, and grouped people based on the numbers of these killer T cells in the blood, those that had higher levels had improved survival rates than those that had low levels. And it makes sense. I mean, you know, anything that chemo is not going to kill, you want to make sure that you're, you have a good army. I'm going to talk about things that will help improve the numbers of these armies. But we want to make sure that we have good numbers to start with. And we all know that chemotherapy knocks down our, our white blood cell count. And, and the white cells are our army. These are our superheroes. That uh, you know, Some of them are attacking the cancer. So we don't want them to go down. I mentioned last week that the drugs that they give people when they undergo chemotherapy, uh, Nupagen and Nulasta, are helping what's called the neutrophil count. We have lots of different types of white blood cells in our body, in our blood, and the neutrophil does not help really attack cancer. I mean, some, some of them do, um, but you know, they also help provide growth factors for the cancer. So we don't want too many neutrophils. We want more killer cells, you know, killer T cells, natural killer cells, NK T cells, all these other ones. And the Nulast and Nupagen do not increase those. They can actually sometimes go down with them. And so I mentioned some, some more natural things like berbamine and something called convolvulus are natural things that can help um, keep the neutrophil counts decent where they're not dropping too low and you're getting a bacterial infection, but also help support the lymphocyte counts as well so that we have a good army. Because anything that the, the chemotherapy is not killing, we want to make sure that our, we have a good army there to attack what's left, and especially when the treatment is over with. It's very common that after radiation is done, for example, that the numbers of lymphocytes, which include your killer T cells, your natural killer cells, goes down below normal, and um, it, it can stay down for months and months and months. And they don't have a treatment right now to help recuperate those lymphocyte counts. So if not at all, if the cancer wasn't completely destroyed by that radiation, then you're starting off with uh, less of an army. So there are some really good natural things that we're going to talk about that can help boost up that army and get that working good just to make sure if there were cancer cells left that they are destroyed. It's also important to measure natural killer cells. So these are all available, most, most labs, Quest Diagnostics, LabCorp, uh, in most labs, you can, you, 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 it's called a lymphocyte subset panel. Where you, it's different than what a lot of doctors are measuring. They, they measure what's called a CBC, a complete blood count. And that, in that complete blood count, they measure your white cells, they measure neutrophils, and they measure total lymphocytes but they don't tell you what kinds of lymphocytes. Mentioned before that some of those suppressor cells that are protecting the cancer are lymphocytes. We don't want to increase them. We want to measure the good types of cells, the lymphocytes that attack cancer. So what's not a common thing measured, but it should be, is called the lymphocyte subset panel. So you take the lymphocytes and you find out what kinds they are. You measure the CD8 cytotoxic T cells. You measure those helper cells, which are the messengers, and you measure the natural killer cells. It's all part of this lymphocyte subset panel. And, and it's, it's not frequently done, like I said, because they don't have treatments really that help raise any of these lymphocytes. Nulasta does not affect them. So it's, it's not something commonly done because they don't really have anything to give you. But there are natural things that can help improve that. And so if it ends up you do these counts and a lot of them are low, and, you know, there's still some cancer in the body and it's becoming resistant to chemo or you're in remission and you're told that you have a high rate of getting a reoccurrence. Well, it's a good test to have done and start working on improving those numbers, those cells that are going to help fight the cancer. Um, so measuring natural killer cells, this, there's studies showing that 
as cancer gets more advanced, it can actually interfere with the production of natural killer cells in the bone marrow. They are made in the bone marrow, just like all white cells are made in the bone marrow. And there's this thing called interleukin-15 that is an important thing that is needed to mature and help produce natural killer cells. And cancer cells release certain things that interfere with the production and maturation of the killer cells. So they're already affecting the, the assembly line, should we say, that's creating the army against them. So they're stopping that from happening in the first place. Um, like a Star Wars clone army or something, you, you're, you're stopping the production of those, those clones right from the start. So they do that. And so it's important to measure natural killer cells. For example, there's a study done in leukemia research in 2013 in Illinois where they took 75 patients with follicular lymphoma and they measured their natural killer cells. And they found that patients with low killer cell numbers were had an inferior overall survival. 24% of the patients with a low natural killer cell count died over the course of the follow-up, whereas only 2% of the patients with normal to high natural killer cells died over the course of the follow-up. So, you know, not, not you know, a big, big difference, but still uh, one important thing of many things to measure. Natural killer T cells, another thing that can be measured. Then there's not that many of them in the blood like there are with the CD8 T cells and the NK cells, but they help bridge the gap between the two, help them communicate. So they're important things to measure. And there's research done in the journal Cancer Research Clinical Oncology in 2012 in Mexico where they took some patients with leukemia, uh, the AML type of leukemia, 28 patients, and they took a blood sample before chemo and they measured the NK T cells in the blood, and those that had low levels of them had an overall poor survival compared to those patients that started off with a good number of NK T cells. And I'm going to talk about things that will increase the numbers. But lastly, you want to measure gamma delta T cells. So you want to measure all four types of killer cells in the blood and make sure that all four of them are in good numbers. And that's what the evidence is showing. Here's a, a study done in the Anti-Cancer Research Journal, 2011, done in Japan, kidney cancer patients. They measured uh, gamma delta T cells before they did any surgery, and they divided the groups into two groups, those that had a good level of gamma delta T cells before surgery and those that had a lower level. And they set a cutoff of 8.7%. They, they followed people for 137 months, and none of the patients with levels uh, over this 8.7% at a good level of gamma delta T cells died in that 137-month follow-up. None of them died, whereas five out of seven patients with the lower levels died during that, during that follow-up period. And uh, so it does seem to correlate and make sense. The, the more killer T cells that you have and in, in natural killer cells you have in the blood, the better your army will be. And so once you clear out those suppressor cells, you'll be able to attack. So uh, I'm going to take a break right now. When I get back, I'm going to talk about natural treatments that can actually increase the numbers of all these different killer cells. This is Cancer Concepts and Compliments. This is Cancer Concepts and Compliments with Dr. James Belanger. The information presented herein is in no way intended as a substitute for medical counseling. If you would like to find out more about the Lexington Natural Health Center, please visit LexingtonNaturalHealth.com. That's LexingtonNaturalHealth.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Cancer Concepts and Compliments. I'm your host, Dr. James Belanger. Before the break, we were talking about the four types of killer cells. I was giving you an analogy that they are, you could think of them as your superhero army that is attacking the cancer. And they each have their own talents. So we have the natural killer cell. We have the killer T cell. We have the natural killer T cell. And we have what's called the gamma delta T cell. So there's just four different types of killer cells. So they're like four different types of superheroes, like your Iron Man and your, your uh, Hulk and stuff. And they recognize different things. And so it's really important that we have lots of those in our bloodstream and surrounding the cancer. And so I mentioned measuring those things are important. Now, 
if you happen to test low, you do that lymphocyte subset panel thing that I was talking about, and, and something is low, the, the killer T cell is low, or the natural killer cell count is low, these are some natural things that can help increase them. There's something I mentioned before in shiitake. Shiitake mushroom, the root system of it, they call it the mycelium, not the fruiting body, not the mushroom part, but what's been studied is the the root system part, the mycelium. There's When you take that mycelium and you uh, extract it in like hot water and different uh, solvents, different substances come out. And something that comes out is called the oligosaccharides. So it's like a compound, like when you're making tea or something. Okay, you take, you know, you're not eating the whole ground up tea leaves. You just stick them in water and some chemicals come out. You know, you got your caffeine that comes out. So, so that's what they do with this shiitake is they take the root system of the shiitake, the mycelium, and they, they grind it up and then they mix it in some solvents to help extract certain things. And then these things they call oligosaccharides come out. And then they purify them and... Um, th then they start putting them in pills and, and testing them in animal studies and human studies. And in the journal Cancer Immunology Immunotherapy in 2006, they basically found that this AHCC, which is a compound from the shiitake mycelium, increased the numbers of those CD8 killer T cells, increased the numbers of the NK cells, and increased the gamma delta T cell. So it increased all three fractions. And there was a, a, it wasn't statistically significant, but a slight increase in the NK T cells. So, but it increased the, the two main you know, killer cells, the CD8 and the natural killer cells. So to, plus, I mentioned before that the AHCC from the shiitake also has been found to increase the numbers of dendritic cells. Dendritic cells are the inspectors. It has also been shown to help increase the production of compounds that help activate the helper cells. So AHCC helps the whole entire immune system from the inspection process to sending the message that the cancer is there, so giving the address to the killer cells, and it increases the number of cells too. So it's like, you know, okay, Iron Man here, the, the uh, enemy over here is in this building down the street. Okay, the HCC gives Iron Man the address and increases the numbers of Iron Men and Hulk and all that at the same time to attack. So that's one thing that can be used. Another thing is garlic, aged garlic, not just, you know, fresh garlic. That has What's been studied is aged garlic. So they take the garlic and they clean it off and they slice it and chop it up and then they let it sit in a tank for like up to 20 months in a solution of water and alcohol and let it sit. And what happens is some of those real harsh compounds that are in garlic get broken down into other compounds. One is called SAC. This is a compound called SAC that forms as the garlic sits around and ages for a while. And they, they think that that might be the active compound. And that's not present in Fresh garlic. I mean, fresh garlic has other things in it that are good, helping keep your blood from clotting, for example, cardiovascular disease pr protection. But this aged garlic is what's been shown to help increase the natural killer cells. So there's been a study done in Clinical Nutrition 2012. They took 120 patients, and these are just healthy people, not, not people with cancer. And they gave 60 of them, so gave half of them pretty large dose of aged garlic, two point, about 2.5 grams a day, which a lot of the aged garlic pills, that ends up being like eight, eight pills or so a day. Or they gave them placebo, like a sugar pill. And then 45 days later, they measured the gamma delta T cells and the natural killer cells. They didn't measure the CD8 T cells, but they measured the gamma delta and the natural killer cells and found that they were increased compared to that placebo group. So aged garlic could be really good if somebody has low levels of those things, but not low levels of the CD8 T cell. The AHCC might be a better choice for that, or a few other things I'm going to mention. So aged garlic, then the company that's really uh, marketing that a lot is called Kyolic. They're, they're the, kind of dominating the whole garlic uh, market, but aged garlic. Okay, now there's a, another mushroom besides shiitake. There is the reishi mushroom that has been studied, reishi mushroom. It's also called Ganoderma. 
So that's a, another compound. And they, another human study done in New Zealand in 2003, they took 34 patients that had advanced cancer. So these were a cancer study, and they gave 1,800 milligrams of a particular reishi extract three times a day orally. They gave it before meals for 12 weeks. They measured the numbers of killer cells, what's called the CD56 killer cells, and it was significantly increased after 12 weeks. Um, that's all they, they found. Besides, It did help with those compounds that help activate the immune system, like gamma interferon and interleukin-2, um, and then, but it also increases the numbers. So that's another choice if the natural killer cell count comes back low on the test. Then there's a, a Chinese herb called Yi Yi Ren that has been studied. Yi Yi Ren. Y I Y I R E N. Yi Yi Ren, uh, something commonly uh, studied and used in uh, Chinese and Japanese medicine. In a study done in Japan in 1992, they took some patients, not cancer patients, but just healthy people, and for four weeks gave them this Yi Yi Ren, or it's also called. Uh, quake seed. I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but C-O-I-X seed. And again, the killer cell numbers, the natural killers, P CD56, doubled in four weeks, doubled. And the most mature natural killer cells, the most active ones, the ones that are the best at killing, they call them the CD16 positive, CD57 negative increased as well. So those are some choices. And another thing I mentioned uh, before is thymus extracts. Thymus extracts, we have this gland in our chest called the thymus gland, and it can increase T cells, like killer T cells and helper T cells. So that's something else that can be used where you take actually an extract from a calf thymus. Calves have an, an active thymus gland, and they have these extracts from calf thymuses, like this one called extra cell thymus by a company called Douglas Labs that has that, and you take that, and I've seen that also really help increase the numbers of the CD8 T cells, the killer T cells. Not the natural killer cells, but the killer T cells. There's even research showing that a low-protein diet might help increase natural killer T cells, NK T cells. There's a study done in cellular immunology in 2004. It was an animal study, so we don't know how that equates in people, but um, you don't want to have too much protein. There's research showing that something called methionine, which is found in a lot of animal protein, might help cancer grow. So you'll see a lot of dietary recommendations on the Internet, and they, they a lot of say don't have too much animal protein. Well, that might be true. So maybe like a gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. So you just take your body weight in pounds and you divide it by 2.2 to get kilograms. And then basically that's amount of grams of protein you might want to have in a day's time. Or maybe even a little bit lower if you have cancer. And, and then focus more on those green leafy vegetables and the nuts and the seeds and, and avocados and coconut and and then a little bit of animal protein like fish or some or some beans, a vegetarian source, which isn't as rich. And that also might help increase the numbers of killer cells. All right, so those are increasing the army. But now we want to talk about things that are going to help make those killer cells better killers. We want to take them and turn them into ninja warriors. Because sometimes people have plenty of killer cells. But they're not very good at fighting. So it's like they're uh, not a, a strong army at all. We want to turn them into the Hulk or to the, into the ninjas. And there are tests that can be done. But first, cancer cells release substances that like poke holes and, should we say, digest away the cancer. And these killer cells produce, they, they call them perforin, like perforating, poking holes, and granzymes. There are enzymes that will help digest away the cancer. And so uh, that, that is one way that they kill them. And then another thing is that they come up and they bind to the cancer cell. The killer cells bind to the cancer cells. And then they target a series of uh, cell death pathways. And that leads to cell death. So those are the two main ways that they kill it. And cancer cell has mechanisms in place to stop them from killing them. So first is this 
interference with perforins and these enzymes. Cancer cells can do things to uh, basically deplete the cancer cells of the things that they need to attack. So, you know, it's like, okay, given uh, Superman kryptonite or something. So the cancer cells can do things to take away the superpowers of the killer cells to weaken them. So even if there's still plenty of superheroes, uh, plenty of killer cells that they don't have their powers very, uh, you know, very good anymore. So cancer cells can express something called PI9, which is basically a substance that depletes or inhibits the production of granzyme from the killer cells in the first place. So it's taking away a necessary thing that they use to kill cancer cells. And there's a research study done in uh, Proceedings of National Academy Sciences USA 2001 in the Netherlands showing that there's an increased expression is, of this PI9 is very common in, in leukemia, Hodgkin's disease, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, lung cancer, prostate cancer. It's very common that when they measure the killer cells of patients that have these types of cancer cells, these type of cancers, that this granzyme B is depleted in their killer cells. Their killer cells have been stripped of a necessary compound that they need to kill the cancer. And it's because the cancer cells making this thing called PI9. There's a study done in, in lung cancer in 2012 where they also found that it's very common patients with lung cancer have an increased amount of PI9, especially as the cancer gets more progressive. The more advanced stage, the more the cancer has learned to produce this PI9. It's a thing. It, it, it starts to, to learn uh, how to you know, fight this army that we have, uh, finding the weaknesses of the superheroes and then using that against them. So yes, it increases PI9, lung cancer, and it reduces this granzyme B. It's also been studied that it's very common in patients with advanced cancers that the killer cells don't make that perforin thing, that thing that helps perforate or poke holes in the cancer. International Immunopharmacology 2012 showed that, yes, decreased levels of perforin in the killer cells, so they can't attack. So it's stripping out of their powers. So how do you know if this is going on in you? There is a test called the Natural Killer Cell Functional Assay. So it's not the numbers that count, but it's actually testing the performance of the killer cells, the natural killer cells. So that you, you send a blood sample, and there's lots of different labs that do this. I use a lab called Pharmacin Labs in Wisconsin, but um, there's different labs. Focus Diagnostics um, has that in um, various labs. Mayo Clinic has, has one where they take, you, you send the blood sample, and they take the natural killer cells out of the blood, and then they mix them with leukemia cells. So they just take some leukemia cells. They don't use your own cancer, but just some uh, stock of leukemia cells. Put your killer cells in there for four hours, and they look to see how many leukemia cells were killed in that four-hour period. If your killer cells are making lots of that perforin and that granzyme B, and there's also granzyme A, if they're making a lot of that stuff, then those things will release from the killer cells and destroy the leukemia cells in, over those four-hour uh, period. If at the end of four hours, a lot of the leukemia cells are still alive, then that means that the killer cells are not um, either releasing these compounds um, that destroy it, or they're not binding very well to the leukemia cells and causing cell death. And I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. So we need to fix that. So we need some treatments that are going to improve that. And then remeasure. So that's, that's great. You, you do this test, find out, okay, yes, there is an issue with the natural killer cells, and then remeasure. So I'm going to take a break, and then when I get back, I'm going to talk about some natural things that can help improve the activity of the natural killer cells. This is Cancer Concepts and Compliments with Dr. James Belanger. The information presented herein is in no way intended as a substitute for medical counseling. If you would like to find out more about the Lexington Natural Health Center, please visit LexingtonNaturalHealth.com. That's LexingtonNaturalHealth.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Cancer Concepts and Compliments. I'm your host, Dr. James Belanger. Before the break, we're talking about 
importance of measuring the activity of the killer cells. So you can do a test where you take a, a blood sample and take your killer cells out of the blood, mix them with leukemia cells in the lab, and see how well they kill those cancer cells in the lab after a four-hour period. And if that test shows an abnorm abnormality that your killer cells are not killing those cancer cells very well, then there are natural treatments that can help improve that. There, there aren't any standard drugs. There are some drugs out there that in, increase killer cells, but they're not used in a regular basis in people with cancer. So they don't really have a drug that they're given everybody to improve their killer cells. So, but there's natural things that can help make them work better. So one thing I mentioned earlier or you know, a few, few weeks ago that there's something called interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is a compound released by the helper T cells the helper T1 cells in particular, that help increase this perforin production in natural killer cells. So there is a test where you can do, where you take a blood sample, check the T cells production of IL-2, and if that IL-2 is not increasing in a good level, then the killer cells are not going to be able to produce as much of that perforin. There are some compounds that I mentioned before, selenium and Coriolis mushroom, and even melatonin that have been shown to increase interleukin-2 production. So if the test indicates that your blood is showing low levels of interleukin-2 production in a what's called a stimulated cytokine analysis, which is performed at, at labs like there's a lab called Pharmacin Labs, then that is going to, to impair your killer cells' ability to function. Coriolis, selenium, and or melatonin could be useful. But then in, in addition to that, there are some compounds themselves that have been shown to increase the amounts of perforin and granzyme in killer cells. One is resveratrol. Resveratrol is a compound found in red grapes and in chocolate and you know in wine and stuff and, and comes in pills and they're extracting it from different plants now. Journal of Cellular Physiology in 2010 in Taiwan. It was an animal study, a rat study. They gave rats either resveratrol or a control, and they noticed that the natural killer cells increased in their activity, so they took the killer cells out of the blood, mixed them with cancer cells, and the resveratrol group, the killer cells performed much better, and they measured the perforin content, not the granzyme B, but the perforin content, and they found that it increased in the killer cells, so they're able to perforate the cancer cells better. They also did a study done in the Journal of Andrology in 2011 in prostate cancer, and they did find that granzyme B also upregulated. So it affects those two things that the killer cells release that help destroy cancer cells. They even found that it helped the killer cells bind to the cancer cells better by upregulating the things, the surface proteins that are on the cancer cells in the first place. So I mentioned before that, you know, the killer cells are looking for certain features on the cancer. So I mentioned blue eyes or, you know, blonde hair or something like that. And so if they see that, they, they will bind. But cancer cells hide themselves. They can change their surfaces so that they, um, they look different, disguise themselves. Well, resveratrol has been shown to increase the the features on the cancer cell that allow the killer cells to recognize them better. They call them like the NKG2 ligands and stuff. So it makes them have a harder time hiding. So that's one thing. And, and last week I was talking about regulatory T cells. Regulatory T cells are suppressor cells that surround the cancer that push out the killer cells. Resveratrol has been shown to affect that as well. So resveratrol has a dual effect, gets rid of some of the suppressors and then makes the killer cells more active. Resveratrol, however, is not well absorbed. And so there are some uh, preparations of it that might improve its absorptability. And there's one, it's called Vesizorb resveratrol is the one that I, I use because it's a better absorbed form of it. Neem extract. Neem is a plant that I was talking about uh, last week, which is good um, also for increasing killer cells. It, they use the leaves of neem, and they've studied it in, in places like India. They gave me, uh, mice sarcoma, a type of cancer, and they, they gave them neem, uh, a neem extract, a compound found in neem leaf, and they measured the levels of killer T cells 
in the sarcoma and it was increased. So it brought in more killer cells and those killer cells were better at killing because it actually increased the levels of perforin and granzyme B. So neem is another one that really needs a lot more studies. It's looking very promising in, in the, a lot of the animal studies at helping to switch over, bring the superheroes in and move out the guards. Rishi just talked about Rishi earlier that Rishi has been shown Rishi mushroom to increase the numbers of the natural killer cells in the blood, but it's also been shown to help make the killer cells work better. So it increases the activity of them and the numbers of them. And they've studied that in uh, China, Journal of Pharmacology or Pharmaceuticals and Pharmacology, 2011. They, uh, uh, these were mel melanoma, uh, um, founding that the cancer cells, uh, melanoma would decrease the levels of perforin and granzyme B in the killer cells. But if they were in the presence of Rishi, that those cancer cells could not do that. So the, the cancer cells could not take away the powers of the superheroes when they were in their presence of Rishi. So it took away that kryptonite from the cancer cells. Rishi's also been really interesting is that I, I've talked about what's called the tumor stroma. Cancer cells can surround themselves with what's called a stroma. And that stroma is made up of compounds that are found in the blood clot and found in scar tissue, such as something called fibrin. Fibrin is a set of fibers that um, turns into a network of fibers that help trap platelets and red cells in a clot. Cancer cells can cause that to deposit around them and in the, in, you know, in the bloodstream nearby. And as the killer cells come in, the fibrin basically depletes them and interferes with their ability to kill. And so there's been some studies done, for example, in a journal Clinical Application Thrombosis and Hemostasis 2008 in Tennessee, where they took killer cells from people and they mixed them with fibrin. Fibrin, and they found that they couldn't kill cancer cells well. When they took the fibrin away, the killer cells from the patients were able to kill the cancer cells better. There's been other studies done where they took the plasma from patients, the liquid part of the blood from patients with cancer, mixed them with killer cells, and they weren't able to kill. Why? Because patients sometimes with cancer produce excess amounts of this stuff called fibrin. The fibrin then uh, mixes with the killer cells and prevents them from attacking the cancer. So it's very important to measure fibrin. There's something called fibrin monomer. You can measure that in the blood. Places like LabCorp have it. You can measure fibrin precursors like fibrinogen, making sure that those are normal. Talked about uh, in, in, a, in a few shows before, uh, enzymes like something called lumbrokinase, natokinase, uh, even turmeric. Um, from turmeric, the Indian spice, helps lower fibrin, fibrinogen. So you can measure those things. If they're elevated, you want to decrease them because they can help interfere with the killer cells. The test I mentioned earlier, where they take your killer cells out of your blood and mix it with cancer cells, they, there's no fibrin in that. They're taking your cells out and mixing it. And if they work good that way, well, that, that's good. At least they're producing that perforin and that granzyme B. But then when they're back in the body, if there's that fibrin present in there, then it interferes. And so that's an important thing to measure as well to make sure that those are good. I always tell people fibrin is like, you know, like a mud in a river. So you think you're going along on a river, you're a killer cell, and you're traveling to the cancer site. But then all of a sudden the river gets all like muddy and thick or full of debris and you can't get to the site. So you might be all charged up and really you know, strong and good and active, but you can't even get there. So you break down, you make, thin that blood, make it flow better so that the killer cells can get there. And then you make sure they're superheroes by increasing perforin and granzyme B with some of the things I've talked about, like Rishi, for example. But Rishi has been shown to help prevent that fibrin from interfering with killer cells. So there's a study done in Oncology Letters 2012. Spirulina, that algae that is very good. A lot of people are taking that, putting that in their smoothies, has also been studied. This is a human study done um, where they used a particular 
extract uh, of spirulina um, called Immulina, and it's uh, studied in Den- Denmark, Copenhagen, Denmark. They took 10 patients. They were healthy patients, and they gave them Immulina for seven days and noticed a 40% increase in the killing, the killing ability of the killer cells. And then when they measured perforin, it increased by 75%. So those are some choices to help increase activity of killer cells if they test out low in those, those blood tests. But that, no, we've been talking about perforin and granzyme B. So that makes them kill better. But another mechanism of how killer cells kill cancer is they bind to the membranes of the cancer cells and cause a series of steps to lead to cell death. So it's like when the the killer cells bind to the cancer, they almost induce like a set of dominoes and the dominoes just start falling. And then finally, when the last domino falls, the cancer cell uh, dies. So it's like a series of steps. And there's all kinds of things that can be done by the cancer cell to stop those dominoes from falling so it doesn't really die properly. And so they call that anti-apoptosis, anti-cell death. And one thing is that there's this compound called C-flip, F-L-I-P, C-flip, that can be like the anecdote. Cancer cell has it to stop from dying. So it just got, you know, you know, attacked by the Hulk or something. But it's, it's like a wolverine and it can regenerate itself and stop from dying because of the presence of this C-flip. So it's very common that C-flip will be upregulated in the cancer. Now, you can't measure that very easily. Um, so we, we have no idea if that's going on. But it has been studied. It's very common in a lot of tumor types. But this is how it avoids dying. And so a form of vitamin E has been shown to help prevent cancer cells from making this anecdote that keeps them from dying. Something called gamma tocopherol. It's a type of vitamin E. And when you eat walnuts, you eat pecans, there's a lot of gamma tocopherol. When you eat almonds, there's more of what's called alpha tocopherol. And most of the pills that are over the market for vitamin E pills are what's called alpha tocopherol. Well, that's not the one that helps inhibit the C-flip. It's gamma tocopherol. That has been studied. In the journal uh, Molecules and Nutrition Food Research 2008, they gave animals breast cancer, and then they gave uh, a group gamma tocopherol and a, a group none, and they found that the gamma tocopherol reduced the tumor growth significantly and helped decrease the production of compounds that are used to protect the cancer from the killer cells. So it decreased C flip, and it even decreased something called survivin. Um, survivin is another thing. Sounds like survival. It, it's something that ca- cancer cells make to survive. So there's all these things that cancer cells make that help them survive. And gamma tocopherol may help that. And it is found naturally in walnuts and pecans, but it does come in pill forms too. So that's the form of vitamin E. Vitamin E's gotten some bad publicity recently saying, okay, it causes cancer. Well, the vitamin E that's over the counter is what's called alpha tocopherol. And in, in, in nature, they're in food that's like all alpha tocopherol. Even almonds have some gamma tocopherol. Um, but, you know, if you eat a variety of foods, they're going to have mixes of types of vitamin E. And when you take just one type, alpha, it depletes the gamma or interferes with the absorption of the gamma and the uptake. And that might be the reason why alpha tocopherol increases cancer risk because gamma is very important in inhibiting cancer. So bottom line, don't monkey with nature. Stick with natural sources of vitamin E. Um, which they do have in pill forms. They're extracting it from natural sources or it's in food. Other compounds that cancer cells release that inhibit cell death, something called BCL2 and uh, survivin. And there's something called holy basil, a form of basil um, that has been studied that helps deplete or prevent cancer cells from upregulating these uh, anti-cell deaths. So you can think of them as like a life support system. When the cancer cells are getting attacked by these superheroes, by these killer cells, they have these life support mechanisms in place. Like I said, like they could turn into a wolverine and help regenerate themselves and stop from dying. And you want to deplete them. You want to stop that. Holy basil is something that has been shown to do that as well as um, gamma tocopherol. Another thing, an important part of holy basil is cancer cells can actually release things that remove the compounds from their surfaces 
that the killer cells are looking for. So remember, the killer cells are looking for certain features on the cancer, certain proteins, certain uh, fat molecules, uh, phosphor, phosphate molecules, things like that on the surface, like that blue-eyed and blonde hair. So, so think about it. Okay, you know, you see in all these movies where the, the uh, police are chasing some guy and the guy, you know, takes some coat from somebody in an alleyway <laughs> and hides uh, that way so that it dec decoys. That's what cancer cells do. They they release enzymes that cleave and remove their surface proteins. They're called MMPs, these enzymes, MMPs. They remove these proteins. Now the killer cells don't see it. And the killer cells also get distracted too, is that now they're, they see these proteins floating around in the blood and they think that it's attached to a cancer and it turns out it's not. Like the, the, can't, the person just threw the coat into the alley and, and, and the police think that that's the person that, you know, where the coat is. So MMPs, holy basil, grape seed extract are great for lowering that. So I hope you have a better understanding of the immune system and seeing all the different things and why cancer cells avoid the immune system and how the natural medicines can really play a role and how some lab tests can help determine where your issues are with your immune system. So we're done with the immune system. Next week, I'm going to start talking about hormones. We're going to talk about aromatase inhibitors and maybe some tamoxifen and natural things that help make those drugs work better. So um, stay tuned for next week's show. This is Cancer Concepts and Compliments. I'm your host, Dr. James Belanger. Thank you for joining us this week. Cancer Concepts and Compliments with Dr. James Belanger can be heard live every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time on the Voice America Health and Wellness Channel. We hope to see you next week for another show. Thank you.